Welcome back. Uh, we have been discussing about the various aspects of existence, uniqueness and stability of initial value problems. Uh, today in this lecture we will uh, see the possibility of continuing the solution. So, what we have discussed so far is given an initial value problem say d y by d x is equal to f of x y and initial condition y at x 0 is y 0 and the existence and uniqueness theorem that gives sufficient conditions on f say f is uh, f x y is continuous on some domain d in R 2 and f is uh, Lipschitz continuous with respect to y on d, then the existence and uniqueness theorem guarantees that there exists a solution. So, there exists a unique solution y in some interval x minus x 0 is less than or equal to h, where h is a small quantity is a quantity defined by x uh, h is equal to minimum of a and b by m. What are these a and b? So, here a is defined a and b are the parameters which we use to define a rectangle inside the domain d. So, rectangle inside the domain d is defined by set of all x y such that x is less than or equal to or say x minus a x minus a initial point is less than or equal to a y minus y 0 is less than or equal to b. So, these are the parameters a and b they are chosen in such a way that this rectangle is inside the domain d and m where m is a constant which is the maximum of the modulus of the function value when x y in d or in r. So, the existence and uniqueness theorem guarantees that there exists a solution that solution is defined on an interval x minus x 0 is less than h. If h is a very small quantity then the solution which we obtain is very uh, that is defined only on a small very small interval. See for ex uh, okay, if we visualize it say if uh, this is your x 0 point and this is y 0 you are looking for a solution and the solution is now <coughs> defined some small interval x 0 plus h and x 0 minus h. So, the question natural question uh, what about the solution outside this interval to the right side of x 0 plus h and to the left, left hand side of x 0 minus h. Can we continue? Can we extend the solution towards the right and towards the left? If uh, is possible we, we say the solution can be continued and if it can be continued indefinitely that is uh, for all x then we say the solution exists for or a solution is defined for all x in the, on the x axis. 
but uh, uh, if the system is uh, nonlinear, then the existence of solution on the all real axis on the all x axis may not be possible always. Uh, but whereas, if uh, the system is linear, then uh, we may be able to exp uh, extend or continue the solution uh, to the entire x axis. So, in this uh, lecture, we are going to discuss about the possibility of continuing the solution uh, outside the domain of interval, which is uh, outside the interval which was guaranteed by the existence theorem. So, to get a feel of it, let us consider an example. So, take an example that is a well known example which we have uh, already solved. See example. So, consider a different differential equation dx dy by dx is y square, it is a no linear differential equation, and the initial condition given is y at 1 is minus 1. So, this x y plane, the solution, the initial point y at 1, this is point 1 it is is minus 1, this is the initial point 1 minus 1. Now, the existence theorem guarantees that there exists an interval on which uh, this equation has a uh, unique solution. So, let us uh, verify uh, these things. So, first of all uh, uh, our f, f of x y in this example is y square, which is Lipschitz on any bounded rectangle. So, let us define a rectangle R, R is given by set of all x y point in, uh, in the x y plane such that x minus the initial point x minus 1 is less than equal to a and y minus minus 1 which is y plus 1 which is less than equal to b. So, obviously, uh, f is Lipschitz. Lipschitz continuous on this rectangle. If it is Lipschitz continuous on this rectangle and obviously, if it is continuous on R. So, therefore, the existence and uniqueness theorem applies here and it says there exists a unique solution in a neighborhood x minus x 0 which is x minus 1 is less than equal to h. We are going to try to find what is h compute h such that x minus x is less than equal to h is the domain on which the solution is defined. So, in our case x 0 is x 0 is 1 that is x minus 1 is less than equal to h. So, domain in which solution is guaranteed by existence and uniqueness theorem. That is right. Okay. So, what is h? h is defined as h is minimum of a and b by m. a and b are um, as given in the definition of r 
and m is m is the maximum value of the function f of x y in the rectangle. So, x y belongs to the rectangle. And since f is just y square, f x y is just y square, we know uh, this f is y square and that will have maximum value or this point. So, let us uh, load this one. This line is uh, x is equal to x 0 plus h that is uh, x 0 plus h is 1 plus a and this line is y is equal to minus 1 minus p and this line is minus 1 plus p and this line is x is equal to 1 minus i and we know that the maximum value of m is attained on this line. So, maximum is maximum value of uh, y square is on, on this side when y is equal to minus 1 minus p. So, m is minus 1 minus p square which is same as b plus 1 square. So, we are looking for h which is uh, minimum of a and b by m, m we got as b plus 1 the whole square. So, we want to know which is minimum. So, what is the minimum and maximum? Let us compute what is the value of this. The maximum value of f p if I define f of b is equal to b by b plus 1 square, then f prime b with respect to b is 1 minus p by b plus 1 cube. So, maximum value for f p uh, for b greater than 0 is b is equal to 1. So, maximum is obtained at when p is equal to 1. So, f of 1 the maximum value is f of 1 is 1 by 1 plus 1, 1 by 1 plus 1 square is 1 by 4 and uh, h. So, therefore, h is minimum of a and uh, the maximum value for b is maximum value for b is 1 by 4 for therefore if uh, we conclude if a is greater than or equal to 1 by 4 if a is greater than or equal to 1 by 4 b by b plus 1 the whole square is less than equal to a for all b positive. So, this uh, implies that 
h is equal to b y b plus 1 the whole square which is less than equal to 1 by 4. So, does not matter what value of a is. So, regardless the value of a of a. On the other hand, if uh, a is uh, strictly less than 1 by 4, if a is strictly less than 1 by 4, then then by definition naturally h is strictly less than 4. Thus, in any case whether a is greater than 1 by 4 or a is less than 1 by 4, in any case uh, in any case the, the value of uh, h we obtained is 1 by 4. Okay. So, that is now uh, for b is equal to 1 for b is equal to 1 a greater than or equal to 1 by 4 gives h is equal to minimum of a comma b by b plus 1 the whole square. So, which is minimum of a 1 by 4 which is equal to 1 by 4. So, thus uh, the best. So, this tells us the the best possible value of h value for h uh, to have a solution. So, to have a solution is 1 by 4 to have a solution is 1 by 4. So, th that tells uh, us by the existence theorem by the existence theorem there exist solution in fact unique solution for x minus 1 is less than equal to 1 by 4. So, that the interval is 3 by 4 less than equal to s less than equal to 5 by 4 is the interval on which we have a solution. But uh, this nonlinear initial value problem we solved uh, by using analytical method and we found that see if we solve the equation d over d x is equal to y square separating out the variable y square is equal to d x and integrating and this is 1 by minus 1 by y is equal to x plus c or y is equal to minus 1 by x plus c. Putting the initial condition y at 1 is minus 1 gives us that c is equal to 0. So, therefore, the solution a uh, general solution which we get uh, by analytical method is y x is equal to minus 1 by x is a solution. But this solution we know that this solution is defined uh, solution is defined for all x between 0 and infinity we look at the graph of it the solution so the given point is 1 and this is minus 1 and the interval in which we got solution is only this so 3 by 4 and this is 5 by 4. So, existence theorem guarantees that 
there is a solution only on this region that the solution is given by this portion. But look at the solution 1 minus 1 by x says the solution is defined uh, between 0 and infinity. So, therefore, the question natural question is can we continue the solution the existence theorem uh, guarantees that there is a solution in the interval 3 by 4 5 by 4 can we extend the solution to the right and also to the left to get a solution in a more more large interval. The solution of the initial value problem uh, we want to continue to the uh, right and to the left this uh, continuation this process is known as a continuation of the solution. So, we deal with this one. So, continuation of solution. So, consider the differential equation dy by dx is f of x y and y at x 0 is the initial condition y 0. And existence theorem theorem implies that there exists a unique solution existence and uniqueness theorem implies that there exists a unique solution y on x minus x 0 less than equal to h. Okay, so, therefore, uh, the solution exists solution exist, exist for all x in the interval x 0 minus h to x 0 plus h. Now, the idea is to continue the solution to right and to left. So, we will deal with the continuation of solution to the right. The similar argument holds for continuation to the left. So, graphically we have uh, the domain D and inside the domain we have a rectangle R and the initial point is inside the rectangle and existence theorem says that the solution exists to right and to left this is x 0 plus h So, solution exists the point is the point is x 0 and we have a solution solution exists. So, this is x 0 y 0. point x 0 y 0. So, existence uh, theorem says there exists a unique solution y uh, let me just call it instead of y it is uh, a solution say phi 0 phi 0 on this interval. So, phi 0 is defined phi 0 x is defined on x 0 minus h and x 0 plus h even at the end point also at the end point x 0 plus h and if I call 
So, let uh, x 1 is equal to x 0 plus h that is this point and the value of phi 0 at x 1 the end point if you call us y 1. So, this point is x 1 y 1. So, x 1 is x 0 plus h and y 1 is the value of the solution at x 1. So, the point x 1 y 1 is a point inside the rectangle and the rectangle is inside the given domain D and the function satisfies all nice properties like continuity and uh, Lipschitz continuity on the all domain D. So, therefore, the question is now can we start the solution can we uh, take the differential equation with a new initial point. So, consider the initial value problem with a new initial condition y at x 1 is y 1. So, therefore, we are trying to start a solution we are going to start a solution from the new point x x uh, no, x 1 y 1. Now, again apply the existence theorem that theorem says that we can find we can find another uh, rectangle find another rectangle another rectangle such that uh, x 1 y 1 is a point inside the rectangle and continue the solution or get a solution to a new point. So, this point is now solution on the first uh, interval is uh, we denote by phi 0 uh, with the new point with uh, the new initial point let phi 1 be a solution that is defined okay which is defined which is defined on x 1 less than equal to x less than equal to x 1 plus some h 1 h 1 is a similarly defined a constant for the new rectangle. Okay, so, now we, we because of the existence theorem we could find another uh, solution phi 1 which starts from x 1 y 1 which was the end point of the previous solution and it is extended up to x 1 plus uh, h 1 that is the maximum uh, interval guaranteed by the existence theorem. So, we got two solutions phi 0 and phi 1. So, therefore, we have two solutions and if I combine these two solutions into one solution that phi x I defined phi x is a solution which is for phi 0 x for x varies from x 0 minus h and uh, its upper limit is x 0 plus h which we denoted by x 1. And the second solution is phi 1 x. So, phi 1 x is defined from x 1 is less than equal to x which is going to x 1 plus some h 1. Okay, now, this uh, combined solution this is uh, now phi is a solution phi is a solution defined on the interval x 0 minus h to 
x 1 plus h. If we write down the form formula for phi 0, phi 0 x is equal to by the basic lemma y 0 plus that was the initial condition plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi 0 t dt and phi 1 x is equal to starts from y 1 plus integral x 1 to x f of t phi 1 t dt. right and uh, phi t if you combine these two this is phi x is equal to the solution starting from y 0 and y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi t dt. So, this phi this phi t is defined by phi x here. So, therefore, we have extended the solution to. So, we thus continued the solution from x 0 minus h to x 0 plus h to a larger interval x 0 minus h to uh, the x 1 plus h. Now, what we can do is we can repeat this process. Now, take x 1 plus h 1 as a new point. If I call this point as x 2, x 1 plus h 1 as a new point x 2 and the value of the function phi 1 at x 2 if I call as y 2. So, I got a new initial condition x 2 y 2. Again if x 2 y 2 is inside the domain and uh, f of x 2 y 2 is defined it has got all properties since f is defined on D and the conditions of the existence theorem are satisfied. So, therefore, you can find an h. So, continue further to get uh, the interval of definition enlarged. So, we continue this process. So, continue So, continue this process further. So, to get larger intervals intervals like the end point is x 0 minus h the right end point is x n plus h n where x n and h n is obtained uh, at each step. So, repeating this uh, ind indefinitely thus repeating the process indefinitely. So, this uh, repeating this process indefinitely on both sides. So, what I have uh, shown is only on the right hand side the same process can be done on the left hand side on both left and right we continue to get uh, we 
continue the solution to successively lo longer intervals. So, if I call those intervals are a n and b n, where x 0 minus h x 0 plus h is the one which we started, which we denote by a 0 b 0 and the newer one a 1 b 1 continued on both sides a 1 b 1 then which is a subset of the next one a 2 b 2 and so on to a n b n and if uh, take the limit of this a n s let a is equal to limit a n n goes to infinity and b is equal to limit n goes to infinity b n then we obtain a largest open interval a less than x less than b over which the solution phi of d y by d x is equal to f of x y such that the initial condition phi at x 0 is y 0 is defined. So, if you can find such a a uh, larger interval a less than x less than b on which uh, the solution of this uh, initial value problem is defined. Now, in this process there are two possibilities. So, two possibilities So, one is this a is minus infinity and b is plus infinity. So, and in this case we say this case solution is defined. Solution is defined. For all x, that is x is between minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this is one of the possibilities that the solution can be extended both to right and to left, uh, so that the entire sol the solution is defined on the entire x axis. Now, the second possibility is either A is finite or B is finite. So, I or both are finite or both are finite. So, A is for a finite number or B is a finite number or both are finite or one is infinite the other one is finite. So, we remark that uh, even if f is uh, even if 
f is continuous and is Lipschitz continuous on every bounded domain d if uh, uh, if f is continuous and Lipschitz continuous on every bounded domain D, we cannot conclude the case 1 above. So, f could be uh, continuous and Lipschitz continuous on every bounded domain D, still we may not be able to conclude that the solution is defined for the entire x axis. Uh, taking an example, the same example of uh, d y by d x is y square, the same example if we, if we choose with an initial condition say y at uh, 1 is minus 1. So, we have seen that the solution exists y x which is minus 1 by x. The existence theorem says that the solution exists only in the interval uh, 3 by 5 and uh, 3 by 4 and 5 by 4, but we can now further extend to left and right that this solution is defined between 0 and infinity. So, what we have here is in the above two possibilities a is equal to 0 and b is infinity. So, remember f of x y which is equal to y square is Lipschitz. on every bounded domain, every bounded domain of R2. But note that if it is not uh, Lipschitz on an unbounded domain if f is globally Lipschitz, then there is a possibility of extending it to the entire uh, the solution can be extended to the entire x axis. But here the nonlinear function is not globally Lipschitz, it is only Lipschitz on bounded domains. So, if is uh, Lipschitz on an unbounded domain, then we can expect larger open interval over which uh, the solution of the initial value problem is defined. So, we state this in the form of a theorem and which we will not prove it. The proof uh, follows if we use a successive approximation method ok theorem. So, let f x y be continuous, let f x y be continuous in the unbounded domain. Denot this by d, which is equal to set of four x y in R two such that a is less than x less than uh, b. 
x is bounded between a and b and minus infinity less than y less than infinity. Okay, it is an in infinite strip where x is varying between a and b and y is varying in the entire y axis on the entire y axis. So, let f of x y satisfy Lipschitz continuity Lipschitz continuity on D then a solution call it phi solution phi of d y by d x is equal to f of x y with the phi at x 0 is y 0 the initial condition is defined on the entire open interval defined on the entire open interval a less than x less than b. So, if uh, this is uh, the case when the function f is uh, continuous and Lipschitz continuous on a given bounded domain uh, is, is domain is not bounded uh, bounded with respect to x and is Lipschitz continuous on an unbounded uh, domain of y axis. Then the initial value problem has a solution on the entire open interval uh, x between a and b and in particular in particular if a is minus infinity and b is infinity then the solution phi is defined for all x that is x is uh, varying between minus infinity to plus infinity. So, here the solution exists globally. So, if uh, therefore, if uh, f is Lipschitz on an unbounded domain then one can expect a solution on the entire real uh, x axis. So, what uh, we have uh, discussed uh, in this lecture so far is the existence and uniqueness result guarantees a small interval on which a solution exists and uh, the solution is unique and we have seen that the solution can be extended towards the right and, and also towards the left provided the function f is good smooth. So, if uh, the function is Lipschitz continuous on an unbound so globally Lipschitz continuous then the solution can be extended further on an open interval on which uh, the function uh, is assumed to be continuous and Lipschitz otherwise still we have to have uh, a small interval x minus x 0 is less than h. Now, let us uh, uh, look at one example uh, consider an example
So, d y by d x is equal to y square the same example. At this time the initial condition is y at minus 1 is 1. So, the initial condition is given y at minus 1 is 1. So, y at minus 1 is 1. And we know that the solution is y of x which is equal to minus 1 by x plus c and putting the initial condition we get uh, c is equal to 0 and uh, the solution is y is, y is equal to minus 1 by x. And if you look at the interval see that solution exists. So, this solution exists for if you try to continue the solution further uh, see this solution exists for minus 1 to 0. So, at 0 that blows up. So, therefore, the solution cannot be continued beyond uh, this point. So, up to 0 it cannot be extended solution does not exist or cannot be continued to minus 1 to 1 uh, minus 1 to 0 I cannot even include 0. Uh, that is natural because it is not uh, violating the previous theorem. Previous theorem says if uh, the function is Lipschitz continuous on the unbounded domain, so un, okay, globally Lipschitz continuous, but here uh, f is not f of x y which is y square is not globally Lipschitz. It is not globally Lipschitz continuous. So, therefore, we cannot expect uh, that the solution is uh, solution can be continued further. Okay, so, uh, we stop the discussion of uh, continuation of a solution at this point and now we come back to a uh, system of equation uh, come back to initial value problem which are not scalar, but a vector differential equation. So, we spend some time uh, in dealing with uh, the existence of solution existence and uniqueness of solution of uh, vector differential equation. So, vector differential equations or you say a system of differential equation or system of differential equations. So, for example, if you have say d x 1 by d t is equal to f 1 of x 1, x 2 and t d x 2 by d t is equal to f 2 of x 1, x 2 t with initial conditions x 1 at uh, t 0 is x 1 uh, x 0 0 1 say and x 2 at t 0 is x 0 2. See if you have 2 uh, equations coupled equations then 
what can we say about the existence and uniqueness of solution of this equation. So, in general we can have an uh, n equations. So, if you have n equations, so d x 1, so we will write uh, in a vector form. So, d by d t of x 1, x 2 up to x n which is equal to f 1, x 1, x 2 up to x n t f 2 x x 1 x 2 up to x n t and f n x 1 x 2 x 3 up, up to x n t we have n equations with the initial conditions x 1 at t 0 x 2 at t 0 and so on x n at t 0 is uh, x 0 1 x 0 2 etcetera x 0 n. So, such, uh, where uh, each f i is a function from r n cross r to r n is a function not necessarily linear. And if you denote uh, this vector this x by just x x t and all these components this into uh, say f of x t t then this equation can be written in the form d x by d t is equal to f of x t t with initial condition x at t 0 is x 0 x 0 is this quantity this is x 0 and this is x at t 0. So, the question under what condition this initial value problem has a solution and solution is unique and we have uh, okay, uh, the uh, stability of solution etc. All these things can be similarly studied. Uh, along the same line. See here the conditions are so our system is dx by dt is equal to f of okay let me uh, write this t comma x this also a notation conventionally and um, x at t0 is x0. So for each time point say t0 t1 is a time interval then x of t is in R n and f is from f is now R cross R n to R n and, and x 0 is in R n. And we can show that if this function f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument f is Lipschitz then this implies that there exist a unique solution. So, if uh, the vector value function uh, the vector function f is Lipschitz with respect to the second argument x then this system has a unique solution and the solution can be continued and the solution is uh, stable with respect to the initial condition x 0. So, all these things can be uh, studied and analyzed in the same manner as we have done for scalar case. Okay, so, with this we finish the existence uniqueness continuation and continuous dependence of solutions of initial value product. Thank you.